Hello, this is Dasha here, and I want to show you how to take your lactate readings safely. Um, I'm going to show you the actual process of how to do this, and uh, we're not going to talk about what lactate numbers you should have or why you should take them, but I know a lot of people do use that as a tool in their training. Um, however, we are dealing with blood, we're dealing with sharp objects, and this is biohazardous material, especially for if you're working with someone else, if you're working with another athlete, if you're working with a team and you're handling other people's blood or even your own blood, this is just important to have a basic safety in place. And because this is a, a lab instrument, we're not in a lab situation. Um, I want to show you how to do it in the safest possible manner and accurately in the, uh, in the setting when you're training outside or in the gym. So um, why... Uh, let's let's see what we have. I this is my setup. This is what I usually carry with me. I have my latex gloves. I have a, a pouch that's waterproof, uh, water type pouch that carries all my materials. I have a, a sharps container which I made myself. It's an old uh, container from a yogurt, and I just make a slot in the top uh, to dispose of all my uh, used equipment. Um, at the end of today. I'm gonna put this in the plastic bag, tie a knot on this and take the whole thing to be safely disposed of at the pharmacy. And then I'll make a new container for the next time when I'm testing. Um, if you forgot a container or you don't have one, you can use uh, a, 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 a water bottle, a disposable plastic water bottle, and you can put all your sharps and all the materials through the, um, the nose of the water bottle and then close it and dispose of it safely at the pharmacy as well. So that's really important. Now, uh, for the test itself, I have alcohol swabs uh, to disinfect my area. I have cotton balls. Um, I have band-aids for afterwards. I have my little notepad to take my reading. Um, obviously, lactometer and the strips, testing strips. And then I have uh, the needles that I use. So I'm going to show you two different types. These are the ones I don't like, and these are the ones I like. So this is the, uh, the type of... Uh, poke thingy that I don't like and I show you why because when I open it you can actually see the needle the needle is right there at the end um, and you can accidentally poke yourself or stab yourself or stab somebody else um, and it's less safe than the ones I like which look like this this one has a push button in the back that um, retracts, uh, opens up the needle and brings it back. So you never actually see the needle unless it's right next to the person's skin. So that it has less risk. So here I'll show you if I open it, you don't see the needle. Um, there is no needle there. So the risk of stabbing yourself is much lower. And um, I like these ones better for that purpose. Um, so that's my setup for testing. And um, when you test, there's a lot of things to do and it takes time. Um, when you're testing somebody or yourself, you have a bit of a grace period because as uh, you're exercising or as your athlete is exercising, they're producing the lactate. So the lactate is accumulating in their blood. And when they come here to get tested, you have maybe up to a minute uh, to get an accurate reading. And why is time important is because um, as your athlete stops here to get tested and the weight and go through the process of disinfecting and poking and taking the reading, um, the, as they breathe, they're clearing out all this lactic acid, all this lactate from the blood. So the longer they wait, the more they're going to be recovered the lower will be the reading, the less accurate of the reading you will get. So it's important to get it, uh, the reading done, the blood, the blood drawn fairly quickly. And if it's been a few minutes now, five minutes that you're fumbling with all the parts and you at least pretty recovered at this point, um, I would suggest you send them out to do another interval and try to be more organized and more ready for when they come back for the second test. Uh, shortly after. Uh, but you're running into a risk of getting an accurate, an accurate meaning um, if you take it too long to get tested. So let's do the test. Um, first thing you want is to put on your latex gloves. And uh, just a word of caution, if you're working again with a club or many athletes, you want to change your gloves every time you're testing someone. You do not want any cross-contamination. This is a big no-no. 
you want to you, you want to avoid touching blood with your fingers. You just want to be very very clean and very accurate when you do your testing and your puncturing of the finger. Um, I'm going to keep this hand glove free because I'm going to be taking my reading off my hand. But if I'm testing another person, two hands in full gloves, absolutely every time because we want to be safe. So here's my uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disinfect the area. And um, I'm going to use one of these three fingers. The reason why is because there's a lot of calluses on your index finger and your thumb. These are the thickest calluses and it's hard to puncture them. Um, these are usually a bit softer. And if you have um, an athlete who has really thick calluses on their fingers, you might want to take reading from the periphery of the finger where the skin is a bit softer. So I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to clean and disinfect it really, really well uh, before I do my test. And at this point, once it's disinfected, you want to take a cotton swab and you want to wipe the residue of the alcohol off the finger. And at this point, I like uh, kind of tucking that, that cotton swab into the uh, palm of the athlete. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to puncture the finger. So I'm taking my needle and I'm going to push it right next to my finger and I'm going to puncture it and there's a bit of a blood starting coming out. So you see there's a first drop of blood coming out. That, that first blood, uh, drop, you're gonna wipe it. You're not gonna test off that one. You're gonna wait for the second one to come out. And as the second one comes out, we're taking our strip and pushing it into the machine. Now, you wanna make sure that, um, I haven't pushed it in, it's just kind of like sitting here. Uh, because I want to talk about the size of the blood drop. It's very, very important that you get a good, juicy um, drop of blood to test from. And you also don't want to squeeze on that finger too much. You don't want to squeeze the whole thing to push the blood out. You want to let the gravity naturally do the work. So this is still not large enough for me. And I'm going to try to kind of like maybe gently massage, but I'm not squeezing on it at all. Um, you might want to like let it hang and relax to have the blood come out. So at this point, we're going to try off this one. So put the reader in and going to take the reading. So I'm going to put the edge of the strip to my blood and I think it's not big enough, but we're going to try. So we took the reading. And I'm just waiting to see if it's enough blood. But ideally, you want to have a bigger drop of blood than that. Oh. 6.2. So that's an error. I'm sitting around. I'm not at 6.2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard this strip. There's a little button in the back. And I'm going to take a new reading. 2.3. It's still high. <laughs> At this point, I won't be testing anymore because I want the athlete to go exercise and come back for another reading. But I would take this reading with a big grain of salt. Um, but that just shows to you something that can go wrong. Oftentimes, it's the size of your sample that is um, a little bit too small that um, you don't get the accurate reading. Um, but that's how you do it. Uh, now, besides... Um, having your uh, blood, blood drop being too small, what else can go wrong? This machine has a temperature range when it works, and it's in Celsius, it's between 4 degrees to 25 degrees. Um, if it's below freezing, you will have a hard time getting a good reading because the strip, um, the blood on the strip freezes before it actually gets tested by the machine. And if it gets too hot, if you do this in the summer and you leave it lying in the sun, it gets overheated, it won't take a good reading as well. Sometimes you get uh, a reading that's wrong because there might be some alcohol residue in your sample area. You didn't wipe it enough with the cotton ball to clean out the alcohol. It might get you give you a wrong reading that way as well. Um, but number one reason why it can be wrong is because your blood drop is too small. So I wish you great training this summer. Please be safe. Uh, handle the blood with care. Um, if you have multiple athletes who coming all at once 
it could be really challenging because you have a lot of people that you're trying to test in a short amount of time. Um, I do recommend having a helper helping you prime the area. So it's going to be a second person who's going to be wiping the finger with the alcohol, wiping with a cotton ball and making a puncture. And then that person that the athlete comes to you, the second person in this kind of like a assembly line and the second coach will take the reading um, and it will be a little bit more efficient that way. Sometimes when I'm by myself and I work with the athletes, I uh, the one thing I can do ahead of time is I can leave this little alcohol swabs open like this, just as I see them coming, I give it to them, they pull out the alcohol, they clean the own side themselves, they wipe it with the cotton ball themselves, they can even puncture themselves, and then they come to me and I do the test reading. Unfortunately, these little strips, you cannot preload them into a machine ahead of time, because if you do, after I think about a minute, it times out and you can't use the strip anymore, you have to load up a new one. So loading up the strips, you have to do just before you're testing, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, so that's all the things. And uh, once again, be safe.